Tom Hartman here on the news. You need to know this. Minnesota is closed for business. At midnight, the government of Minnesota shut down as Democratic Governor Mark Dayton and Republican state lawmakers could not reach a deal on how to close a $5 billion budget deficit left behind by former Governor Tim Pawlenty. In what looks like a microcosm of the debate on Capitol Hill, Governor Dayton wanted to include, along with deep spending cuts, an income tax hike on millionaires and billionaires to promote shared sacrifice in an effort to fix the state's budget deficit. But Minnesota Republicans absolutely wouldn't budge on that, thus shutting down the government. So now as many as 35,000 government employees are being sent home without pay, a slew of government services are cut off, and state parks are closed just in time for the 4th of July, which means Republicans not only have have started a war against working people, they've started a war against patriotism by ruining Independence Day. Someone call Fox News. When you hear someone say the American economy is recovering, ask him or her how many zeros are in their, in their bank account. Economists at Northeastern University have shed some light on just what the current economic recovery in America looks like, and it's a great deal for rich people. Since 2009, the real national income of the United States has increased by $528 billion. But a lion's share of that increase has been in corporate profits, which grew by $464 billion. Total wages for working people in America? Only up $7 billion. In other words, corporate profits accounted for 88% of income growth in America over the last two years, but workers' wages, only 1%. In fact, the average hourly wage of workers in the last two years went down. But CEO salaries, especially on Wall Street, are surging and have returned to pre-Bush Depression levels. Just more proof that trickle-down economics does nothing more than create a nation of peons. In the best of the rest of the news, Want to know why House Majority Leader Eric Cantor really walked away from debt limit limit negotiations last week? Because he has a financial stake in our nation defaulting on its debt. According to Cantor's latest financial disclosures, he has a $15,000 short bet on the dollar. In other words, a $15,000 bet that the the U.S. dollar's value will plummet. And there's no better way to cause the dollar to lose value than to ensure America defaults on its debt. Cantor's office dismissed concerns over what appears to be blatant conflict of interest, arguing that the short bet is just part of a balanced portfolio. I've been saying Republicans want to crash the economy to make President Obama look bad in 2012 for for a year and a half now at least. But it appears they also want to crash the economy to pad their own bank accounts. Is Secretary of the Treasury Tim Geithner on his way out? According to senior White House officials, Geithner is considering leaving his post after the debt limit fiasco is resolved. Geithner denied the reports, saying he plans to stay in his job for the foreseeable future. But a source of the White House says Geithner has been discussing plans to leave since early this year. Secretary of Defense Robert Gates left yesterday, and a handful of other top officials have left the White House this year, including Press Secretary Robert Gibbs and Economic Advisor Larry Summers. Which makes me wonder, are the rats fleeing a sinking ship? Or is President Obama finally coming to his senses? And will he soon be putting some real progressives on his staff instead of the same old corporate suits? The 2012 election could have Stephen Colbert's fingerprints all over it now. Yesterday, the Federal Elections Commission gave the OK to Colbert to create his own super PAC, a new political machine born out of the Supreme Court's Citizens United decision last year. Super PACs can solicit unlimited corporate contributions and then spend that corporate cash in our elections on stuff like television, internet, and radio ads. Super PACs used to not exist before Citizens United, but now there are over 100 in operation around the country, mostly created by right-wingers. And we already saw what effect these super PACs have on our elections when they dumped hundreds of millions of dollars in secret corporate cash into the midterms last year, giving Republicans a landslide victory. Colbert created his super PAC, known as Colbert Super PAC, to highlight just how absurd campaign finance laws have gotten in America. Now that it's been approved by the FEC, it's unclear how Colbert will use his new political toy. After the ruling, Colbert told a crowd of supporters, Today we put liberty on layaway. Goodbye, OPEC. Hello, LPEC. The nations of Argentina, Bolivia, and Chile currently control about 85% of the world's lithium reserves, a key resource as the world transitions to electric car batteries. And those nations are now considering forming an OPEC-like cartel to make sure they're in the best position to profit as demand for lithium increases around the world. But this apparently doesn't concern us here in the United States. We're worried about our six wars in the Arab world to make sure our access to depleted Middle East oil isn't disrupted. While America may have been on the right side of history in the past, we're on the wrong side of the future. Crazy alert. And the title for the loudest creature on the planet goes to the Micronesia 
Schultze, also known as the singing penis. I'm not joking. French and Scottish scientists have discovered the two millimeter aquatic insect with a phallic nickname is capable of producing sounds above 100 decibels about the sound of a motorcycle from 20 feet away. The bug produces the incredibly loud sounds by rubbing its namesake against its abdomen to attract a mate. That practice of rubbing body parts together to cause noise, also known as stridulation, is common in the animal kingdom, but rarely produces such deafening results. But if you think that's an odd way to attract a mate, consider that there's another animal on the planet that's been known to snap photos of its sexual organs and send them across the internet to prospective mates. Now you tell me which is more bizarre. And that's the way it is today, Friday, July 1st, 2011. I'm Tom Hartman on the news.